Hey everyone, so today we're going to be looking at this one problem. It states that two blocks are at rest on a frictionless incline as shown in the figure below. What are the tensions in the two strings? All right, so it's an incline problem and it states that it's a frictionless incline. So we don't have to really worry about anything in the X, I mean, in the Y direction. Um, so let's see, the objects, the, the blocks per se, are uh, not accelerating in the Y direction. So the acceleration in the Y direction is zero. And since they're being held by the by the ropes or the, the strings, uh, the acceleration in the x direction is also zero. Um, so we know that fg is going to be equal to fn in both cases here, but I don't exactly know if that's going to help us solve the problem. So let's look at the x direction. So because the acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero, the positives must mitigate the negatives. And so because of that, whatever force we have in the positive or whatever forces bring the blocks down on the incline has to be counteracted by the force of tension of the strings. The strings have to hold that force that's being exerted. Um, so in our case, it's gravity that's going to be bringing the, the blocks down, but it's a component of gravity called the force of gravity parallel or, or the component of that. So that has to be equivalent to the force of tension. Now, if we look at the, the blocks, the, the first string is just holding the, the five kilogram block, but string two is holding both the five kilogram block and the three kilogram block. And so when we go to solve it, Fg parallel of one plus Fg parallel of two will be equivalent to force of tension of two. And then force of tension of two, of excuse me, one, would just be the force of gravity parallel of one because it's only, it's only holding one block. Um, so let's actually draw the components of gravity um, and solve for the values. Alrighty. So if we draw this out, I think it would help if I just drew it on the actual diagram. We have the force of gravity, which points straight down. All right. And I'll label this force of gravity. And then we have the perpendicular and parallel components. So this is the perpendicular component, and this is the parallel component. Fg perpendicular and Fg parallel. And so now we have to figure out the angle measure. And how do we do that? Well, there is a slight proof you can do. It's going to be a little messy, so I'll just draw it out here. So let's say this was 20 degrees, and then I had a block here, and it had the, the different components, right? So I'm just replicating what I just drew. And we're trying to find where this 20 degrees is going to go. Uh, well, we know since this goes straight down, this is going to make 90 degrees. And so there's 180 degrees in a triangle, right? That's 110 degrees. So then we get 70 degrees. So we know this, this side right here is going to be 70 degrees. And so this has to make a 90 degree angle. And so this would be our 20 degree angle. So because of that, let's erase all this, our 20 degree angle would be right here. That's gonna be our 20 degree angle. And so now we wanna find Fg parallel, right? Because that's the component in the x direction that'll help us find what needs to be counteracted by the uh, string. Um, so then for that, we can use trig. And in order to use trig, we need at least one of the side lengths. And one of the side lengths here is Fg. And Fg is equivalent to mass times the gravitational constant, which would be, let me plug this into my calculator, 5 times five times 9.8, which gives us 49 newtons. All right, 49 newtons. So that's Fg. And so if you were to use, use trig, that would just give us 49 times sine of 20. And that would give us around 17, so around 17 newtons. All right, so this is equivalent to force of gravity one, the parallel component, which as we said before, is also equivalent to the force of tension of one. All right, so the question asked, what are the tensions in the two strings? So we found the tension in the first string, and that is 17 newtons. But we still have to find the tension in the second string. So let me change colors for this. Let's rock with the light green. All right, so we already know one part of it, right? We know that Fg uh, parallel of the first block is plus Fg parallel of the second block is equal to force 
of tension for the string two. Um, so we have to find force of gravity parallel of the second block. And so we can just use the same process we used before. Let's draw force of gravity, all right, FG. And let's draw the components. So this is FG perpendicular, FG parallel. And since it's pretty much the same proof, this is gonna be our 20 degree angle. All right, and then we can just replicate the same thing with FG. FG is mass times grav the gravitational constant, so that gives us three times 9.8, and that would give us 29.4 newtons, and that is equivalent to FG. And so now we can use trig to be 29.4 times sine of 20, and that gives us approximately 10 newtons. And that makes sense because if we were just looking at these individual components here, uh, the 5 kilogram block is heavier than the 3 kilogram block. And so it makes sense that there's a greater force that's bringing it down. So now, if we can just combine these two, because 10 newtons is Fg parallel 2. And so if we do 17 newtons plus 10 newtons, as we see it up here, if we add them, we get the force of tension of string 2. That gives us about 27 newtons. And that is our answer for force of tension 2. So the first string had a tension of 17 newtons, and the second string had a tension of 27 newtons. All right, that should do it for the video. Hope you guys learned something, and drop a comment down below if you have any questions.